This is The Guard of English. I'm Tim Freitas, and I get one question more than any other question. How can I increase the sophistication and complexity in my essay? And the truth is, is that it really all starts in the thesis. And today, I'm going to go over two words that you can add to your thesis, whether you're doing literary analysis or rhetorical analysis, that can indeed help develop the complexity and sophistication in your writing. So, let's check it out. Here at The Garden of English, we've got some Patreon supporters. I just want to give a huge shout out to them because I really appreciate the support that they do indeed offer us. If you're not supporting The Garden of English through Patreon, that's okay. But the other way that you can support us is by just looking down right there in the corner and clicking on that subscribe button because we give away tons of tips to help not only English teachers, but also English students really perform well in their classes, whether it be AP or not. So please make sure that you also click that bell because you don't want to miss any of our videos that give you tips that could potentially help you score better in your classroom or be more effective in teaching your kids. When it comes to writing and writing complexly and in a sophisticated manner, we really need to think about how we are going to put layers into our writing. Because if we don't have layers in our writing, we can actually have complexity. And so because of that, we need to say, what tools can we put in our toolbox that can help us get there? And the truth is that the two words that can help you get there are the words that, although. We can put them in a rhetorical analysis thesis. We can put them in a prose literary analysis thesis. We can put them in a poetry uh, analysis thesis. And although it can go in different places in the thesis, what's going to happen is those two words are going to create and force you to actually produce a layer of understanding and comprehension that you're going to articulate in your paper and then write about. And because of that, it's going to open up new horizons for you to actually to consider. So let's actually check this out with a couple examples. I'm going to give you the first example of reading with complexity with a commonly read speech in most classes, which is George W. Bush's post 9-11 speech. If you haven't read it, you're going to want to pause the video now and actually check out the link I have in the description to that speech so you can know what's going on. Now, assuming that you pause the video and that you've read it, or that you've read it in your class, or that you've taught it to your students, let's pretend that we're actually doing a rhetorical analysis for that speech. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bring up on the screen a thesis that could actually respond to this quite well. Now, this thesis statement is going to list the choices in it. I know that some teachers don't prefer that their students do that. I've had an entire conversation about this with my friend Jim Jordan, by the way. You can check that video out right up here. For those of us that actually do encourage our students to put choices in their thesis statements, at least on exam day like I do, I don't in regular circumstances, but on exam day I do, here's a thesis that actually embraces the complexity, lists the choices, the rhetorical choices, in the thesis as well. But what I want you to focus on is I want you to focus on the words that although, and I want you to consider how it adds a layer to the analysis and a layer to the understanding that the student brings to the table. In his post 9-11 speech, an address that recounts the state of the nation after the deadly terrorist attacks, former President George W. Bush varies his pronouns, subtly shifts his tone, and repeats patriotic images in order to highlight that although all its citizens are experiencing tragic grief, the United States is and will remain strong, ultimately moving the divided American public to unite and prepare for retaliatory action. Now, you're gonna notice that this thesis is actually quite strong and that where it says that although, right after that, we're talking about some of the effect or the purpose of this speech, the message that he has, okay? And everything that's going to be written about in our paper if we do a rhetorical analysis has to tie back to this message and this purpose, which would be, hey, we are grieving, but we're gonna to come together in our grief. Hey, we're gonna believe that our nation is still strong and we're gonna to come together in our patriotism. And then on top of that, we're gonna all unite and actually try to go on this quest for justice through retaliation. So we've got some layers here. And what's nice about this is that a simplified thesis, which you could still write a good paper for without the words that although in it, wouldn't actually sound as layered and complex. Why? Because what would happen in a paper like that is you would list out all your choices and you would say George W. Bush does A, B, C, and D. And then you would say, in order to highlight that the United States is and will remain strong, ultimately moving the American public to unite and prepare for retaliatory action. Now, the problem with that is, is that although we are indeed uniting the American public, that person who has written the thesis statement without the grief and the tragic grief is totally ignoring the beginning of the speech. So when we put the words that although right there, what we're forcing ourselves to do or we're, what we're forcing our students to do is to make them see the layers of the movements of the text. And now this is great because as kids write their essays, they're gonna see, all right, I need to talk about how people are brought together in their grief and then how people are brought together in their patriotic unity and then how all of that would move them to want to do something more. Okay, and that would be go prepare for retaliatory 
action. With a complex thesis that's nice and layered, that shows that there's a layered understanding and that primes the paper to actually produce a nice sophisticated response. Now does a complex thesis actually guarantee a sophisticated response? No. But what it does showcase is a sophisticated reading and if students are reading in a more sophisticated manner, it's going to be much easier to get them to write in a sophisticated manner. Okay, well what happens if you're the type of teacher that says, you know what, my students don't list choices in their thesis statements. Or if you're a student that says, my teacher doesn't let me list choices in my thesis statement. That's okay. It's really Really not a problem. And the reason why is because there is an option for you as well. Let's look at this same thesis statement but without the choices in it. In his post 9-11 speech, an address that recounts the state of the nation after the deadly terrorist attacks, former President George W. Bush highlights that although all its citizens are experiencing tragic grief, the United States is and will remain strong ultimately moving the divided American public to unite and prepare for retaliatory action. Notice here, this thesis is not that much different. We took the choices out and we just put George W. Bush highlights these things. We didn't use the word in order to this time because we weren't tying them to the choices that were before. Not a problem. Take the choices out, get rid of in order to, and then we can actually just take the word highlights or showcases and put it right there. And you'll notice right here that we have a that although as well. And that phrase, that although, does indeed move us to that greater complexity of our understanding. And we want to make sure that we do that. You might be saying to yourself, but I take AP Lit. How is a rhetorical analysis thesis statement going to actually help me? Well, first of all, there's a lot of similarities between the thesis statement for rhetorical analysis and any of the lit questions, and you can break down the prompts the exact same way. And if you're looking for some prompt breakdown videos for lit or lang, you can actually check right up there in the corner for some of those types of activities. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually showcase an AP Lit thesis once again because this is an exam based thesis. I still encourage my students to list the literary techniques or the literary elements in their thesis statements. So you're going to notice that I will do that. You might have a teacher that says that you don't have to. In an AP Lit you don't actually have to list any choices or elements. I have my kids do it because it helps guide them as they go throughout their paper. But we're gonna look at a thesis statement for a short little play called Naked Lunch by Michael Hollinger. Maybe you've read it, maybe you haven't, and if you haven't, that's okay. Because we just wanna actually look to see what elements of complexity and sophistication show up just by adding the words that although to the thesis statement. We're gonna pretend that the prompt said something along the lines of analyze the literary elements and techniques that the author uses to convey the complex relationship between the two characters in the play. So if that's what our prompt would actually look like, let's see what a thesis would look like in response. In Naked Lunch, a play that details an interaction between past lovers, Michael Hollinger presents a symbolic setting, develops an aggressive, intense interaction, and repeatedly showcases submissive responses in order to highlight that although Lucy and Vernon seem to desire to make their relationship work, it's much too toxic, ultimately illustrating that a, an abusive person and an abusive personality will stop at nothing to dehumanize another, even if it's someone he or she claims to care about. Wow, look at the complexity that's actually there. If I wanted to talk about the complex relationship, a lot of times what students do is they just say, the author does these things to create complexity or to create a complex relationship. But we need to answer that question. And you'll notice that the words that although allow us to see those layers. So if we were asking the questions, what's complex about their relationship? When I go back to that thesis and I see those words where it says that although, and I read what comes after, we see those layers. It says that although Lucy and Vernon seem to desire to make their relationship work. That's what seems to be the case, but what's actually happening? We then see that it is much too toxic. And now we've got a lot to write about in our paper. We first start our paper by talking about how it seems like they're trying to make things work. What's the author doing here that shows that they're trying to make it work? And then we have the rest of our paper to write about all of the parts that actually make their relationship toxic. You'll notice that on my thesis statement there, although the question that I brought up talked about the complexity of their relationship in the story, there was a little part at the end that said illustrating and there was a universal insight there. Most kids call that theme and most teachers call that theme. Please note, I saved that for my conclusion. Uh, and if you've watched any of my other videos about writing the actual prose passage essay, you'll notice how that is actually done. Once again, you can check out that playlist right up here. Let's remember though, that's just a prose example of how the that although can work. And in that last example, we talked about how it added layers to an understanding of the complex relationship. You can do the same thing with the character. If you ever get a prompt that says analyze the complex character of the protagonist or of the speaker or of, of who knows what, it's very, very easy to just say that although the speaker is blank, he or she is also blank. Then you get those movements that you can then write about in your paper. That's gonna help establish a line of reasoning and a complex line of reasoning because it's gonna allow us to know where you're gonna go in your paper. We're gonna analyze how the author creates this particular part of the character and then builds on that character with this particular part and you can write straight through your essay. It's gonna be perfect for you. Now, 
One last thing that we have to do for those AP Lit folks. The that although works only for the AP Lang folks with the rhetorical analysis, but for you AP Lit folks, this is gonna work out really well with poetry as well. You can even put it into question three, but we're not gonna do a video about that right now. With poetry, here's how this is going to look. I'm gonna actually use an Ozymandias prompt that I wrote myself. Um, if you ever have not read the poem Ozymandias, it's super short because it's a sonnet, so it's 14 lines. You can check that out in the description right down below. I also have a video where I've broken it down with a very good friend of mine named Gina Cordum, and you can see that video right up here. In this particular piece, we're going to look at a thesis statement that tries to convey complexity, but we're going to actually convey complexity of thematic idea. So please note that the words that although don't have to always come right after the words in order to in a thesis or right after you make a judgment about what the author is trying to convey for a message or what the author is trying to do in terms of characterization of a relationship or of a character. What we can do is we can actually save the words that although for thematic statements, which is often where you want to leave them in relation to poetry. So let's actually check out a thesis that relates to Ozymandias. In the sonnet, Ozymandias, a poem exploring the musings of a traveler, Percy Bysshe Shelley develops a frame narrative, contrasts the work of a tyrant with the work of an artist, and highlights a boastful yet presently unsupported claim, ultimately illustrating that although kingdoms may fall at the hands of time, the communicative power of an artist's creative talents will not. Notice this, we have a complex universal truth here, and this is something that we can write about. How does this poem actually convey that any major kingdom has indeed passed away throughout history, and yet how does the poem actually also convey that the art and the communicative power of the people that have voices can live on? That's what we want to do. We want to look at these things with complexity. We want to look at all of what we read with complexity. And when it comes to the rhetorical analysis, when it comes to the prose passage, and when it comes to poetry, it's very easy to add complexity and layers to your writing by saying to yourself, where can I put that phrase, that although, so that we can show not only our reading ability, but also then write about it and show that we can indeed embrace complex thought. If this video was helpful, I'm going to remind you again to just click like and subscribe. Also remember to hit that bell because we've got plenty of tips for you here at the Garden of English. We are active on Facebook. We are active on Instagram. You're going to want to follow us there and check us out and stay tuned with what we are actually doing. If you have any comments or if you want to actually practice writing some of these thesis statements for rhetorical analysis or prose or poetry and you want me to check them out or you want anybody else in the Garden of English community to check them out, why don't you toss them right down below as you work on things in your classroom. Or if you're trying to do this for your students, why don't you actually write some practice ones and toss them down below and we'll make sure to get some comments back to you. Until next time, have a great one.